Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. We have many obligations in this world. Many of the obligations are worldly. Many of the obligations are to other people. But we also have one major obligation to ourselves. The obligation to ourselves is that we must learn how to transform our state. The fact that we were born into this world as humans is a great wonder. There are many great wonders in this world. The earth is a great wonder. The religions are a great wonder. The creation is a great wonder. The sky and the sun and the moon are a great wonder. Of course, Allah is the greatest of wonders. But each of us has this obligation to change ourselves, to change ourselves into what it was that we came here as. Man was sent in purity, but that purity was lost. It was lost in many ways. It was lost through the intermingling of the mother's blood with the embryo. It's lost when you enter into the world and all of the things of the world become grafted onto you. So you become something other than pure. You become something other than what was sent here. There are millions of energies within our body. And each of these energies produces thought patterns and produces intentions to get certain things accomplished. It produces interaction within the world. And we, when we do these different interactions, are essentially changing who we are throughout our life. And if we look at our life, we can see the changes that occurred in our life. We can see our attitudes when we were children. We can see our attitudes when we were teenagers. And we can see our attitudes as we grew into adulthood. And these attitudes have not been the same. They've been constantly changing. And why do they change? Because the different energies within us bring about a different attitude and a different intention within us. And so we have to become very cognizant of what is flowing through our being. To become pure, we have to go through so many changes. One of them, and at a simple level, is food. There are so many different foods that we can give to ourselves, that we can eat, that we can find. Now, there is haram food, and there is halal food. And Allah has permitted us to eat meat and certain other foods if we go through a certain ritual. However, all of these animal foods, with them come with more energies. So besides the energies that we have, that we are constantly going through, when we eat animals, we take on the energies of these animals, and then we have more energies that we have to go through and get rid of. And so we have been advised 
by wise ones that we should become vegetarian, that we should become ones who do not eat meat. The reason being that it helps for the purification of ourselves. So even though things are allowed, it doesn't mean that they are the best for us. The best for us would be if we could find a vegetarian diet. Now, when these various energies come up within us, they're almost like separate births within this one life. And when we take on <clears throat> these separate births, we also create gods with these separate births. In if, if, if we take on the energy of wealth and the accumulation of wealth, then we take on the idol of money. If we take on fame and the accumulation of fame, we take on the idol of fame. And so it goes. Each particular fascination that we have with the world brings about a certain kind of idol with it. And it begins to be what we worship. Now, what does that mean that it begins to be what we worship? It means that most of our energy, most of our time, most of our intention is set towards accomplishing the goal from that specific thing. So if we are chasing money, we spend all of our time chasing money. We spend all of our energy chasing money. So money becomes an idol for us. Money becomes incredibly important for us. And that which is important for us is our God. Let's be real about this. We're in a place where there is form and there is non-form. When we are within the world, and chasing the things of the world, we are chasing form. Now, mind and desire interact, interface with form, and they only know form. So the mind is constantly trying to imitate the things that it sees in the world, but the things that it sees in the world are the things of form. They're not the things of formlessness. So the mind is constantly interacting and trying to imitate that which goes on in the world. So you become trapped in that imitation. Desire is constantly looking for things that will bring pleasure to the self. So desire is constantly chasing pleasure. Desire is constantly chasing men or women. Desire is constantly chasing things that it believes will give it some kind of satisfaction from the world, where the world will somehow feed it, where the world will somehow make us more and make us greater. And this is all based on the false intuition that we don't disappear. So as we accumulate the world, we have more. But as we all know, this is a temporary situation and a temporary situation that falls apart. We have to begin to understand the difference between that which is form and that which is formless. And it is only when we truly grasp that, 
that we can truly grasp what it is to become pure. Allah's qualities are pure. Earth, air, fire, water, and ether are all creations and are not pure. They carry energies with them, and they intrinsically carry a certain kind of arrogance within them. So our body is full of earth arrogance, and water arrogance, and fire arrogance, and air arrogance. And if you can't understand that, watch a tornado. That's air arrogance. Watch a hurricane. That's air arrogance. Watch the tides in the water and watch a flood. That's water arrogance. Watch an earthquake. That's earth arrogance. All of these things happen because when creation occurred, arrogance somehow became part of that which was material form. So all of us are tied to those kinds of arrogances. And we need to go backwards and begin to rid ourselves of these various arrogances. Arrogance leads to situations which put us in conflict. Arrogance leads to situations which create difficulty. Why? The arrogance of self-importance constantly is trying to put our physical self, our self within this world, this self that we see in a mirror, this self whose hair we comb, this self who we dress, we are constantly trying to put it at the forefront of things so that it becomes more important than other humans, so that it becomes more important than the rest of the family of man. And we've created ways to do this. We've created religions, and we say to ourselves, my religion is the best religion, and every other religion is less than mine. So we must work towards the propagation of my religion. And some even say, we must work towards the propagation of my religion by any means necessary. Because there is something about other religions that is offensive to Allah. We need to be able to analyze very closely everything we do and everything we see. We need to be able to analyze the world and see the world's influence on us. And we must analyze also the formless, because we do have opportunity to see the formless. We have opportunity to see mercy in action. We have opportunity to see compassion and love in action. And if we are observant, we can see the effect of these formless things on ourselves and on others. These things aren't learned from books. You can't learn about the truth from books. You learn about the truth from nearness. That means you have to be with one who is in that place in order to understand about that place. Did you ever wonder why when you are with a baby, 
a different sort of atmosphere enters into the room. A different sort of feeling enters into the room. It brings down animosity. It brings down anger. It brings down those qualities. Why? Because the baby doesn't have them. And so all of a sudden, someone has come into the room who is without guile, who is without those qualities that bring about reaction, that is without those qualities that bring about satanic outbursts, that bring about the opposite reaction. So babies don't bring about anger. Babies don't bring about jealousy. Babies don't bring about these kinds of things because they don't do anything to engender these kinds of things because they don't have those kinds of things within them. And this is why it's necessary to have someone in our life who has these qualities so that we can see these qualities. Reading a book is like rain. The rain comes, but after a period of time, the rain disappears. And that's what happens with book knowledge. The book knowledge may be there for an instant, but after time, the book knowledge disappears. You need a constant reinforcement. And that constant reinforcement comes by way of a well that has a stream or a pond that has a stream that fills it. And like that, the one who carries these qualities all the time, the one who brings forth these qualities into the world on a regular basis is constantly being given these qualities by Allah. And the great miracle of being given these qualities by Allah is that these qualities can then be given to others and there is no diminishing in the one who gave these qualities because Allah cannot be diminished and the qualities of Allah cannot be diminished. And we need to understand that. We need to understand what can be diminished and what cannot be diminished. And by understanding that, we are developing wisdom. Because if we give credence, if we give importance to the things that can be diminished, then we are looking for results in a place that can't give us any. We're looking for satisfaction in a place that can't give us any. We're looking for contentment in a place that can't give us any. Scientists have created globes. They look like eggs. And they put America, and they put South America, and they put Asia, and they put Australia, and all the different countries in Europe on these maps. And we think that this makes the world into a very, very big place. The mind does the same thing. It takes the world and it makes it big. Desire looks at the world and sees it as very big and something that has to be conquered and controlled. This is the work of the mind and this is the work of desire. It shows the world so big that it is not manageable, that we can't handle what's going on in it. And because of that, we enter into all of these difficulties. We, we get involved in the chaos of this non-manageable place. But what wisdom tells you is that all of these things are really very small. All of these things are smaller than an atom. The truth is that as long as you stay within that realm, you will be in a chaotic place because the world is chaotic and is unmanageable. But if you move from there to that which is formless, 
then you come to a place that is manageable and that is constant, that is stable, and that is content. Contentment is not going to be found in the world because the world <clears throat> is made up of the elements. The elements have arrogance within them. Arrogance comes from mind and desire. Mind and desire are not capable of being content. We have to begin to work not from the mind and from desire, but we have to begin to work from the heart. And we have to begin to understand the relationship between the soul and God. And it's in understanding this relationship that we will find out the truth about ourselves and the truth about our Lord. So as we become pure, as we become mature, like a ripe fruit, we will find our real freedom. Our freedom is not in manipulating the world. Our freedom is not in being able to manipulate the elements. Because of their instability, we are constantly going to run into accidents and disasters. We are constantly going to run in the difficulties, because that's the nature of the world. <clears throat> Look at history. How long during history has there been a time of absolute peace within the world? You can't find such times. Why? Because of the instability within the world. And man's reaction to this instability, which leads the horrible, horrible things. Inhumanity becomes the nature of humanity. Inhumanity becomes man's touchstone. It becomes what he does. Somehow, we who are seeking truth have to understand how to escape from this constant conflagration of arrogance that brings about this inhumanity of man to man. We have to walk a different road. Where others are cruel, we must be kind. Where others take on and push people away who are in difficulty, we must bring them close. Where some look for separation, we must find unity. It's only that way that we become mature. The truth is, the ones who are trying to conquer the world are children playing with children's toys. Truth is beyond these toys. Truth is beyond conquering lands. Truth is beyond establishing kingdoms. Truth is beyond establishing empires. Truth is understanding that there is light and there is darkness, and we must escape from the darkness. We must travel towards the light, and the light is where God's qualities exist. And we must find someone who is connected to the light in a profound way, so profound that from the light there is a permanent connection to him that gives out truth and that gives out God's qualities. These people who are in San Kamal have the unique ability to give to others that which they have. And one of the reasons they are given what they have is because they give it to others. So because they are of the nature that is gracious, they are of the nature 
that is giving. They are of the nature that is mercy, merciful and compassionate. They have been given the opportunity to get God's qualities directly and give God's qualities to man. So we must try to keep our relationships with people who understand this and who are trying to do this. Because being tied to the world and trying to conquer the world only leads to destruction. There were two bullfrogs who both wanted a certain area within the pond they lived in. So they attacked each other. One of them opened its mouth and opened it as wide as it can, trying to swallow the other bullfrog. And the other bullfrog began to expand itself larger and larger and larger until eventually they both just blew up and that was the end of them. And that's what happens when we try to conquer the world. We come to a disastrous end and all we have to do is look at history to see that what happened to hitler what happened to napoleon what happened to genghis khan what happened to all of these people who tried to conquer the world they got lost and they got destroyed and all of their grandiose ideas and dreams vanished all of the van all of the civilizations that came before us vanished everything that we know in this world that came before vanished if you go to an archaeological dig often they'll find five six seven eight layers of civilizations one under the other each one buried the one before it each one buried the one before it everything in this world has a time span. Everything in this world has a limit. If we are going to go beyond that time span, if we are going to escape from that limit, from that time span, we must understand truth. And what is truth? God is truth. And what is God made of? of god is made up of his qualities so it is our responsibility if we are going to transform ourselves to go from worldly attached being to a godly attached being a being that instead of trying to conquer the world tries to conquer the self our mind has ideas. These ideas become form if we allow them to. Now, some things are okay to become form, but many things are not allowed to become form. So we have to learn how to suppress all of our ideas that are not pure. We have to learn how to suppress all of our ideas that are not holy. We have to learn to suppress all of our ideas that are not godly. We have to learn how to suppress that which isn't God-like. As we do that, as we suppress those ideas that come from us that are not godly, we become more mature and wisdom gets the opportunity to rise from us. And as wisdom rises within us, then our heart begins to melt like a mature fruit. It becomes soft and pliable. It becomes tasty. But before that, we are stuck in this world that is not stable, where it's very hard to get a foothold. So for our own sake, for our own comfort, for our own 
contentment. To reach true contentment, we have to give up our attachments to this unmanageable world. We have so many things that we try to manage in this world. We have children, we have grandchildren, we have parents, we have grandparents, we have possessions, we have homes, we have cars, we have so many things that we're juggling. We must become free of these things. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have some of these things because you need them for your life, but you can't be attached to them. For some people, their home is their status. Their car is their status. Their wealth is their status. What should be your status is your qualities. Your mercy should be your status. Your compassion should be your status. The way that you act should be your status. And you should be very, very careful as to how you act. And we have to analyze every one of our acts. It takes effort to walk this path. It takes effort to go in the straight direction. It's much easier to just let everything go and take things as they come. But we are trying to mold a true human being out of ourselves. And to do this, imagine if you were a sculptor. You can't just take your chisel and hit anywhere without thinking about it. You can't create a statue without thought and without precise ideas. And it's the same thing about our lives. We have to give it thought. We have to think about what we're doing. We have to think about why we're doing and the things that are wrong, we have to throw out of our existence. We have to let go of them. We have to let go of that which is not going to help us mature in the qualities of God. Man's body is supposed to become a home for God. And to become a home for God, it has to be pure. God goes to that pure place. And if we begin to understand that we have a soul that is connected to that purity, we can begin to act in a pure way. And we must concentrate on this. And we must analyze what it is that we're doing at every moment. There is no rest. It's when, when, when you, you lose focus that terrible things can happen. Satan will come to you and Satan will say, there's plenty of time to get started. It's not necessary to do it right now. And this is the great lie that there's plenty of time to do this. None of us know how long we're here for. So we have to concentrate our efforts on becoming mature and on becoming God-like, on beginning to understand God's qualities and incorporating those qualities into ourselves so they become part of our actions, part of what we do, part of the way we live and who we are, so that we are the ones who spread unity. We are the ones who spread love. We are the ones who walk love around, who walk mercy around, who are a resting place for those who need comfort. We must become those people in the way that the Sheikh gave comfort to everyone who came within his purview. We must give comfort to everyone who comes within our purview. We must give comfort to all men and we must give comfort to ourselves. And the way we give comfort to ourselves is to begin to understand the qualities that belong to Allah and take them into ourselves. This is what we are meant to be. The rest of the world is a lie. And we have to come to the point where we can see through that lie 
and see the truth. And the truth is, God alone exists and everything else is false. And when we truly understand and believe that, we will become what it is we're supposed to be. And may that happen for each and every one of us. And may Allah make it easy. Amin, amin. Ya Rabbi Lala, amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.